Hi, uh, welcome. In my series of lectures in computer science, uh, in the last few days we've been talking about sorting. Uh, sorting is uh, a very fundamental problem in computer science and I would say that today is the most important of the lecture. Uh, it is actually the concluding lecture. In the last few lectures we have talked about in great detail about three concrete computer algorithms for sorting, namely insertion sort, merge sort and quick sort. Uh, we talked about these algorithms and we also implemented them in Python. So in today's lecture, which is the last lecture, we just put everything together and uh, compare the performance of these lectures. So basically what we'll do is that we will generate a set of large data sets, uh, a very, a collection of lists with of length 2500, of length 5000, of length 10,000 and try to sort them using the functions that we wrote in the past, in the past three lectures and uh, measure the time these functions take and using this we would be able to compare which is better whether quick sort is better or whether insertion sort is better and we will see also how the pattern is as data size increases how do these times change for these algorithms so timing analysis which is the next section so in order to be able to do these this timing analysis we basically need two things one is we need some ability to measure the amount of time a function takes to run on a given data set. So that is number one. Number two is that we need to be able to generate a set of large data set or large lists, right? So let's talk about number one, which is that how do I measure the time taken by a function uh, time taken by a function on a given data set. So essentially I, I need I need a function, let's call that function time it. That function takes in another function as input. So remember it takes another function as input and this is the function whose performance we have to measure and we provide the data which will we will feed to this function and measure the time. So what you do is you well this is not that hard so what you do is you measure the current the, you measure the time in the beginning which is the start time so you say start is equal to current time so you measure your watch in the beginning then you run the function so you say output equals function of data so you run output is equal to function of data and then you compute the end time using end is equal to current time. So what you're doing essentially is that you are measuring your watch in the beginning and then you're measuring your watch in the end. So by this, uh, it's like it's like when in a race, how do you measure the time that a person takes in to from finish to end? You measure the time at the beginning by the time that person runs the 100 meter and you measure the time at the end and the difference is the is the time taken by that person to finish 100 meters. So similarly here you simply return end minus start and that's that's essentially what this function does. So hopefully that is clear. Uh, that's the pseudocode for the time it function. What we haven't talked about is that how are we going to measure this current time. So for that let's go to Python. So in Python there is a concept of module and code comes in modules and so for example time is a module it, it comes with Python and within this module there are functions so time module has a function called time and I can call module dot function name and it returns the time current time so and it returns the current time in seconds so for example for example if I call it now and if I call almost a second later I get 0 9 and then 1 0 so if I call now and if I wait and then I call, it's been almost four seconds, I would guess, well, three seconds and it's 70. So, so it measures the time in seconds, right? That's the function. Another way I could do is I could say from module name, so from time import function name. So this will give me, this will import time function for me, in which case I can just run the time function. So things to note is you can either import a module import module name and then you can use module name dot function name or you can 
import function from the module from module import function and then you can run the function does that make sense so in our code analysis by the way yeah yeah that's fine so from so to write the time function I will just say from time import time then the time it function will essentially take in a function as input and the associated data with it it will uh, it will measure the start time so measure the start time as time then you will run the function which was the input on the data you will measure the end time that's the time and you will read well let's write a comment so let's write a comment that return the time in seconds so you will return end time minus start time so does this make sense so we have now written a function that takes in another function as input and returns returns the time taken by that function I would like to stress here that this is the first time we have written a function name of the function is time it which takes another function as input and returns the time taken by this function on this data so by this by the way this is not possible in all languages not in you cannot do the following in every language that you write a function and then you pass that function as an argument to another function here you write another function for our case we will write functions like quick sort and merge sort we will generate some data and we will pass insertion sort as a function and some list of 10,000 elements or 20,000 elements of data and this will return the time taken by insertion sort function on that list of 10,000 numbers so that's what it will do this is not possible in every language to pass in function as an argument to another function so keep that in mind anyways let's keep going uh, so we have talked about one which is some way of measuring the running time of a function the second thing we have to talk about is how to generate a large random data set that we can then sort so first let's talk about how will we generate a random number one number so for that there is a random module and inside the random module there is a random function which you can call as many times as you want and every single time it will generate a random number the random number will be between 0 and 1 so you can try this on your machine and every time you will try it you will get different numbers than me but they will always be random in between 0 and 1 so that's what it does next you can use so once you know how to generate random numbers you can then use something called list comprehension to generate a list of random numbers so I can call random this for i in range of 3 so this will generate a list of three random numbers it will essentially call the random function three times for each i in range of three so I, when i is zero you call the random function for when i is one you call the random function and you stick together in a list and return so if i do range of four you get a list with four elements so using this i can now generate random data from random import oh, I don't type random import random and I can say I can say uh, generate some random data I've already done this so I will just copy paste so this is my random data right now before we go any further before we can, so we are kind of ready to do our timing analysis make sure that you have the code from previous three lectures uh, and I'll uh, insertion sort dot py quicksort.py and mergesort.py if you haven't written it download it from the website if you have written it copy it to a directory I made a directory called analysis and this is what I have in my directory in my directory I have quicksort.py mergesort.py insertionsort.py and analysis.py analysis.py is the file that we are writing today and all the other files are the ones that we wrote in the previous three lectures so insertionsort.py is this file merge sort.py is the merge sort and similarly I have quick sort right so before we go further let's import the three functions so from insertion sort import insertion sort 
so from merge sort import merge sort from quick sort import quick sort so this by the way should help you understand how modules and functions work so insertion underscore sort is the name of the module and that corresponds to the name of the file for this to work the file insertion underscore sort dot py with this exact same name should exist in the same folder as analysis dot py so you can think of modules as roughly speaking the name of the python files now inside the module there is a function called insertion sort and that is what you are importing here if the name of the function was insertion sort 1 2 3 this would be called from insertion sort dot py from import insertion sort 1 2 3 if the name of the file was xyz dot py you would just say xyz dot p from xyz import insertion sort 1 2 3 so just to repeat the name of the file is the name of the module and the name of the function inside the file is the name of the function that you are importing so i hope that makes sense so now that it is done i can just print the amount of time it will take let me reduce the font size so let me put a whole bunch of print statements there's no point in typing it so so I have three sections the first sections measures the quick sort timing the second section measures merge sort timing and the third insertion sort timings so what I'm doing is that I generated these six data sets of increasing size first list is, has 2500 elements second has 5000 so on and so forth the last d6 has 80,000 elements in it and for each of those list I run quick sort and measure the time taken by quick sort on data set one similarly i run out on d2 and i measure the time where it says percent f it will be replaced by the time taken by quick sort on d2 if that is not clear well we can let, let let me just explain it to you by an example so from quick sort let's import quick sort so quick sort is a function which if i call on a list one minus one it'll just sort it and you will get the sorted result back uh let's uh, import time and random and let's also write down the time it function so this is one good thing about python language is that you can just try interactively with the programming language and play with it so that's 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 something i really like about the language so i define data set and i if i just call time it on quick sort on d1 what will this do it will return the time taken by quick sort on data set 1 and that's what it, it takes the quick sort takes 0 0.02 seconds on a list with 2500 numbers that's what it means if i take d3 if i define d3 and i run if i time it well the time taken will be higher than 0 0.02 second because the data is bigger so it takes longer and sure enough it takes 0 0.11 second which is higher than d1 so that's essentially what this code is doing let's uh, let's exit out of this and uh, let's run our analysis and see what we got so boom so see what is happening so as we are as the quick sort is proceeding let's t take a look quick sort takes 0 0.02 seconds then 0 0.04 seconds then 0 0.09 seconds then 0.2 seconds 0 0.41 seconds so to sort 80,000 number it takes roughly one second to for to quick sort uh, merge sort takes 0 0.02 second then 0 0.049 seconds so the performance is slightly worse than quick sort for 10,000 numbers it takes 0 0.107 point for 20,000 0.22 so it's very comparable just slightly worse than quick sort and that is in practice that tends to happen merge sort takes slightly uh, has slightly worse performance than quick sort uh, in practice even though they are 
order both order and login algorithm so it's very similar uh, but merge sort performs slightly bad but take a look at insertion sort the difference is huge for 2500 elements quick sort takes 0 0.02 seconds up and and insertion sort takes 0 0.6 seconds that's 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 like 30 times bigger quick sort takes 0 0.04 seconds and and insertion sort for 5000 takes 2.4 seconds that's again 60 times bigger there's no comparison between 0.1 second and 10 seconds it's it's so much different um, and then for 20000 elements take 0.2 and then 40 seconds i am not go i'm going to just cancel it here just not to waste both your time and mine Insertion sort for 40,000 element takes 160 second and for 80,000 element it takes about 10 minutes. 10 minutes compared to 1 second. That's 600 times bad. 600 times worse insertion sort is on an 80,000 list. And 80,000 isn't even a big list. That's, that's nothing from compared to sorting that companies like Google or Facebook have to do so I want to really drive the point home that if you have a bad algorithm you will start paying the penalty very soon enough you won't have to wait for a billion numbers to sort you will start paying the penalty on 20,000 numbers for 20,000 numbers it takes insertion sort 40 seconds compared to 0.5 seconds so that's that's my point another thing I want to and analyze is the fact that as you increase the data size by 2 the runtime of insertion sort tends to move as follows for 2000.5 seconds then roughly 2 seconds then 8 seconds then roughly 34 see how for every time you increase the data size by 2x the time taken by insertion sort increases by 4x and that is 0 0.5 times 4 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, 34 times, which is roughly 34, 34 times 4 is 132, again almost the same, 140 times 4 is 572, which is again uh, 4 times. So every time you increase the data by 2, the time takes roughly by 4. And that is expected because it is an order n square algorithm and n square algorithm if n increases by 2 n square will increase by 4 so that is very bad n square algorithms are bad because every time data increases by 2 the it's it's just increases by square quick sort and merge sort do not suffer this problem like for 10,000 it's 0.1 for 20,000 it's roughly 0.2 it's almost 2x for 40,000 it's twice of 0.2 that's 0.4 and 80,000 it's just a little bit bigger than two times so it's it's almost 2x and this is what you would want in a good algorithm uh, that if you that it scales linearly if you increase the size of the data by certain proportion the time should increase by the same proportion and hopefully not more square just worse square is not acceptable so that is expected out of merge sort and quick sort because they are n log n algorithm so every time every time the data size increases by a factor of 2 then runtime increases roughly by a factor of 2 so this is very good so uh, so this is very good we have today shown concretely and you should remember for the rest of your life how insertion sort is very bad order n square algorithms are very bad and how quick sort and merge sort which are order n log n algorithm perform on perform so much better and we saw it concretely we have been talking about it but today we concretely got some numbers and and ran some program simple program and we got some numbers and so you should remember this for the rest of your life so I would say that this concludes sorting I have had a lot of fun talking about this uh, in this lecture series uh, we basically discuss sorting in great detail we have come a lot far and you should congratulate yourself if you followed all the lectures we in the first lecture I motivated what the problem statement of sorting was and that was followed by three concrete sorting algorithms insertion quick and merge sort 
and uh, today we conclude this topic we concluded this topic by basically discussing the three algorithms and uh, per comparing their runtimes uh, sorting is a very fundamental problem in computer science and a lot of research has gone in finding good algorithms good sorting algorithms so so take a moment to think about it uh, the world would be a very different place if we didn't have good algorithms I mean if you would go onto Google and it would Google would just be a blank page before it returned as any results because if if Google did not have if we did not have good sorting algorithms it would take Google a lot of time to return relevant results because it will spend a lot of time sorting the results so this concludes the lecture I have some interesting homework problems so try to do them and if you have any questions follow up with me thank you and thank you for watching see you in the next lecture